Okay. It is now. Oh. Oh. I forgot my little icon. Ah, there I am. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, welcome back, everyone. It is now time for Webcomics 102. Uh, this is the second half of my webcomic how to panel. Uh, this is from self promotion to self publishing. So, this one is going to be more useful for folks who have already started a webcomic. Um, but if you haven't started yours already, just keep this stuff in mind for the future. Um, real quick, I forgot to go do something. I'm going to go retweet my Twitter announcement so that people will know that I'm still going. Because I thrive off attention. Okay. <laughs> All righty. So let's get into it, I think. Let's just dive right in. So you've got a webcomic. That's awesome! You did the thing, you're incredible! Welcome to the world of webcomics! Now that your comic is available for people to read, I bet you want people to read your comic, right? Let's talk about that. Uh, making it big, part one, is growing your comics fan base. Um, also, I forgot to put my, my introduction slides back in here, but if anyone is just joining us, hi, my name is Star, I make a comic called Cast Off, um, if you're watching on the Twitch chat, I will drop some links in the chat. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, there will be links in the description. Uh, you should go read my webcomic. Wink! Um, but yeah, so part one, making it big, uh, growing your comics fan base. So, promoting is the business side of webcomics. The art part's done, now you gotta do the business crap. Uh, if you want to get the word out about your comic, you have to promote it. This means attracting new readers, new sets of eyes to look at your comic and read it, hopefully, not just look at it. Uh, there's lots of different ways to promote your webcomic. This is, by the way, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just what I have experience and have knowledge on, okay? So the first and easiest is to list your comic on free webcomic listings. Uh, these are sites that compile information about webcomics so the users can manage the comics they read and also find new ones. Uh, so if you list your comic here, they may find your comic as well and read it there. Um, these are the big ones. I use all of these. I feel like Top Web Comics is kind of the big name. It's been around for a while. Comic Rocket is nice because if you use it, like you'll get an alert every time a comic on your list updates. Uh, it's very handy. Um, also, The Belfry is one that folks use a lot. Um, I still occasionally get hits from there. Uh, and The Webcomic List is another one. I kind of botched my entry on The Webcomic List because I spelled my own comic's name wrong. It's one word, and I spelled it wrong. So it's kind of useless for me now, but it's fine. It's fine. Also, there are more. Um, I know that there's like some others out there, but these are the ones that I use. Uh, mirror Sites. Uh, so the concept of a mirror site is that you have the same content of your comic posted in multiple places because different people like to read web comics on different places. Some will only ever read on your main website while other folks prefer to use sites like Webtoons or Tapastic or Tapas now. I thought I changed all the instances of Tapastic, but I didn't. I missed one. Oops. Um, so these comics all have built-in audiences because people who use sites like Webtoon are there because they want to read comics. And if you host your comic there, they might want to read yours. Um, so it can broaden your reach just by existing on these comic sites. Uh, so for example, my main website is castoff-comic.com, um, but... You can also read it on, these are not the actual URLs, I just wrote them like this so that it's easier to read. I also don't have a Comic Fury, but I have a Tapas mirror, and I have a Webtoon mirror where you can read, like, the comic is all the same, but these are multiple places you can read it, because the more places you post it equals more eyes on your work. Also, yeah, no, Cast Off is not on Comic Fury, but I felt like having three in this diagram looked nice. So, there you go. Um... Fan art and link exchanges. Um, if a comic you love have a has a fan art gallery, uh, consider drawing them fan art. I do this occasionally. I've been meaning to do it more, but I haven't had time. I want to go back and draw fan art from a fave comics. Uh, many web comics have a fan art gallery. Cast Offs definitely does. Uh, and having your work there can help get new eyes on your work. 
On the same note, if a comic offers link exchanges, displaying their banner on your website and vice versa will help attract new readers to your comics. Um, this is what I was talking about earlier with, like, links pages. Um, <laughs> so, like, if you host, a, sometimes people will do link exchanges, where it's basically, like, that you can contact them and be like, hey, um, I like your comic. If I keep your, a link to your comic on my, um, page, like on my comics link page, will you do the same for me? And sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. I personally just post the web comics I like and I don't worry about reciprocation, but this is definitely something that you can do. I think this was more common practice in ye olden times, uh, but it's something that people still definitely do. Um, neither of these options are foolproof, but if you're lucky and polite, it can work out in your favor. Just don't be the guy who comes up to you and says, um, I drew you fan art. That means you are 100% required to advertise my comic for me. Uh, don't be that guy because nobody likes that guy. Okay? Okay. Uh, so this is, again, our list of comic hosting websites. These are not an exhaustive list. These are just the ones that I personally know about and have used. Uh, so like I said, Webtoon and Tapas are the two big ones. Those are where I keep cast off. And um, in addition to my main site, uh, DeviantArt is a good place if you just want to, like, post comics. Uh, DeviantArt and Tumblr are both better for, like, comic strips where you don't need a whole dearth of background information to get the joke. These are good for, like, joke comics that can be reblogged on Tumblr or whatever. And then Comic Fury is another one that I do not personally have experience with, but a lot of folks stand behind. So you should check it out and see if it's good for you. Advertising. Uh, buying ad space on other websites can be a great way to reach new audiences and find new readers. Uh, rest in peace, Project Wonderful. Um, you can buy ad space on webcomic listing sites, which is good for reaching a wide variety of users, or you can use ad services like Google AdSense. Um, I personally have not used Google Ads at all, um, but the other two up on the screen I have used. So Top Web Comics, which is that website listing. Um, website that I talked about, uh, they sell ad space on their website that varies in price depending on like where your banner will be. Um, but I have definitely gotten like people use people go on top web comics to check out web comics. And so it's a great place to advertise your web comic because anybody who uses that service likes to read web comics. So if you host your stuff there, you post ads there, uh, then you can definitely like find some new viewers that way. Uh, comic ad network is kind of the same thing. It is an advertising network specifically for comic creators. Um, it's still fairly new. It's only a few years old. And so it's still kind of like getting its feet off the ground. Um, but at the moment it is fairly cheap to use. You can literally just like log in and just like throw pennies at the screen. Um, I usually I'll put like $5 into it and just like set up a couple ads to run on other people's comic websites for a few months. Uh, and I've gotten a couple readers that way. Uh, you kind of have to, like, figure out who the best people and websites to advertise on are. Um, I'm not going to go too into depth on that. Uh, that's a whole other can of worms. But try to, my one tip would be try to pick comics that are a similar genre to yours if you're going to use uh, Comic Ad Network. Social media. My favorite and least favorite thing. Uh, so using social media is a fantastic way to spread the word about your comic. Uh, there are dozens of webcomic communities around the internet, all with different focuses and ways to connect to your audience and other creators. Uh, so now I'm going to break down all the different social media. Um, not an exhaustive list. These are just the ones that I'm familiar with, and I think the majority of you guys will be familiar with. So first up is Instagram, which is not just for food pics, turns out. Uh, so pros for Instagram. It is a great venue for posting art and comics. Uh, there's a large artist community. It is very easy to find other artists on Instagram. Uh, you can use up to 30 hashtags per post, uh, which will help you get discovered. So like, say, if you post, oh, I don't know, um, a cat, a picture, a drawing of a cat, or your webcomic has cats in it, you can use like the cat hashtags on Instagram, and people who like cats can see your cat post and be like, ah, a person of quality. <laughs> and then they might follow and read your cat webcomic. Also, um, if you have, like, I see a lot of, like, strip comic artists do this, uh, where they'll 
put like all their panels are the same size and so they'll just like make each panel its own uh photo and then you can swipe through to read them um cons for instagram is that i hate it <laughs> um the algorithm is continuously changing and right now it is very very annoying and aggravating um, sometimes your followers just will not see what you post. I'll give you guys an example. Um, I have over 40,000 followers on Instagram. It has now become difficult to get over 500 likes on a post. That's a really bad ratio. <laughs> and I hate it. Instagram used to be a lot better and over the years, it's just gotten worse and worse and worse, and the algorithm has degraded. The only reason I still use it is because I have an, a scheduler app that I will talk about later. Um, also, whatever you post, it needs to be square or at least close to it. And if you're posting multiple pictures, they all have to be the same aspect ratio. So that can be a pain in the butt. Um, there is also no built-in sharing method. Like, Twitter has retweets, Tumblr has reblogs, Instagram doesn't have anything like that, aside from people sharing your post in their stories. But, like, most of the people I talk to don't even look at Instagram stories, so... Uh, also, you can't post hyperlinks on your footage, on, like, things you post. You have to just say, hey, link in my bio, and you get, like, one link that you can post on your profile. And if you're like me and you're trying to promote multiple different things, it can be a pain in the butt. Anyway. <laughs> so that's Instagram. I would say Instagram is worth it if you don't put a whole lot of time into it because it's, it's not worth it. But that's just me. Twitter. The birds and the memes. Uh, Twitter is my social media of choice that I'm the most active on. Um, it's very good for having conversations with people who follow you and also other comic artists that you like. Just kind of a casual venue for conversation. Uh, it has hyperlinks, which is good. Whenever you're promoting something, you can put a link in the same post so it's very easy to, for people to know where to go. Um, you can post up to four photos in one post. So if, you like, if you're like me, what I do is whenever I have a comic update, I'll post one panel from that comic next to an ad for my webcomic that kind of gives people an idea of what to expect. And it has like the title of the comic, it has the website link on it, etc. And I stick those two next to each other for every single comic update. Then I have the hyperlink in the post so that people can really easily click on it and find it and go read the new update. Um, also, posts can be spread easily by other people liking and reblogging the things you post. Um, so that's helpful. That's already a step up from Instagram. Uh, the cons of Twitter. The birds are stupid. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, so cons are there's a 280 character limit, which means that it's difficult to have like lengthy conversations uh, and you kind of have to keep what you say short and tight. Uh, hashtags are really not effective on Twitter. Um, like I don't even bother with hashtags anymore. They are not worth it. Um, also, sometimes it crops your pictures weird, which is how you get like pictures of like a full body cute cute anime girl, but then it just crops in on her boobs. <laughs> and everyone's like, thanks, Twitter, great. <laughs> uh, TikTok, not just for the teens. <laughs> I will admit I am relatively new to TikTok. Um, I've been using it for a little more than a year now. Um, but despite that, I am already almost at 100,000 followers on TikTok. TikTok is the new hotness that is very easy to grow on. And I see a couple people in the chat who are here because of TikTok. Welcome. Um, so depending on you, pros for TikTok. Depending on what you post, it is very easy to quote unquote go viral and grow, grow an audience. For example, I make art tutorials on TikTok. People like the educational content so much that I have grown from 50,000 followers to 100,000 followers almost in like a month. TikTok is wild, and if you, like, hit the sweet spot, your stuff will get spread around to thousands of people who have never heard of you before, and they, it's, it's a good app. It has a very high discovery rate, is what TikTok is good for. It's good for, like, getting your work out to a lot of different people. Whether or not they'll be interested in what you're posting is an entirely other matter, but at the very least, people will see the damn thing. Um, the video format is a plus and a con. 
Um, the format allows for like you to kind of get creative with the kind of stuff that you post, but also you can only post videos on TikTok. So, for example, if I just well, like want to answer a question in text, it's very difficult because usually you'll just have to make a video and talk over it. And it's a lot harder than just answering a question by replying to it. Um, <clears throat> Whenever you post something, your videos will pretty consistently pick up new views after posting because TikTok is good about just like kind of pushing stuff out to new people. So I like almost never delete things off of TikToks. Like videos I posted six months ago are still getting views and likes and all that jazz. So it's good for just like you post something once and then it just continues circulating until you delete it, basically, which is nice. Um, also, once you get to a certain follower count, you can live stream on TikTok. And I have actually been experimenting with TikTok Live um, because if you go live on TikTok, uh, it will help your reach even more because a lot of people will discover you just because TikTok will tell people, hey, this person is streaming. Look what they're streaming. Um, I've gotten thousands of new followers just by piddling away on TikTok Live and recording my computer screen. It's awesome. Um, but yeah, again, the cons. Uh, you can only post videos, which sucks sometimes. Um, the algorithm is dumb because sometimes stuff will explode and sometimes it'll get like two views and you're like, hey, TikTok, what the hell? Um, unfortunately, TikTok is also like Instagram. You get one bio link on your profile and it doesn't allow you to post hyperlinks in the very, very limited description space that you are given for each video. So you kind of got to weigh the pros with the cons, you know? Uh, and then lastly, I almost I considered not posting this here, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about Twitch, because did you know that Twitch is not just for gamers? <laughs> it's also for artists like me. Um, so Twitch is awesome for sharing your process on comics or other art it is very useful for growing a community and also bonding with your community. Um, I've got just kind of a cast of regulars who will show up for my streams no matter what I'm doing. As she says on Twitch, yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah, so like, it's good if like you want to show off your process, you want to talk in real time with the people who appreciate your work. I see hashtag Twitch squad in the chat, appropriate. <laughs> um, and also, if you like set up a bot, you can use it to like kind of automatically post links to your work, like while you're working. And so it kind of like does the promotion for you when you're live. Cons. Don't start on Twitch. Twitch is good if you already have an audience, if you already have visibility on other platforms, because Twitch is not a platform you grow on. Twitch is a platform you bring, you grow on other platforms, and then you drag them over to your Twitch kicking and screaming sometimes. But hey, all of you guys are here. Hey, <laughs> so it worked a little for me. All, how many people are in here right now? 145. So. <laughs> Also, you uh, have to talk to people, which can be a plus or a minus. I personally am an introvert, so I can only stream a few days a week. But this is my social time. Anyway, moving right along. Oops. Click. Okay. Uh, Tumblr. It still exists, I guess. <laughs> Listen, I still like Tumblr, but we're kind of in the Chernobyl stage of, t of Tumblr, where it kind of exploded, and now there's not a whole lot of people there, but the people who are there, it's like, yeah, they're, they're still here, still posting memes. <laughs> uh, Tumblr, you can post up to 10 images at once, and it's not going to crop your pictures, depending on how you format the post. Um, they allow you to have hyperlinks and format your text, and uh, reblogs can keep posts circulating without too much input, so you can kind of post and run. Cons. It's hard to have conversations on TikTok. It's not a terribly social app. Also, um, I'm the type of person I like to schedule posts in advance and then just kind of like let stuff auto post for me so I don't have to think about it too hard. Um, but Tumblr is dumb because it doesn't let you do that through any third, third party apps. Um, it is weird and broken sometimes. <laughs> Less so now, but still. Um, also, there are significantly fewer users on TikTok now than there were in the early 2010s. I lived through TikTok. I joined TikTok in 2010. I've seen it all. Um, there's still people who use it, but it is a fraction of the number of people who used to use it. So, oh, I mean, I mean, Tumblr. So this is my complaint. Why does all social media start with a T? 
Why does all social media start with a T? We got Twitter, Tumblr, uh, TikTok, Twitch. It all starts with a T. And it gets really confusing when I'm trying to stream and talk about social media. And then I get confused and people make fun of me in the chat. <laughs> all right. So social media. Why should you care? Because followers on social media, generally, if someone is following you on social media, it means that they like what you they like what you make. They like what you draw. They like what you post. They like you, theoretically. Uh, and if people like what you make, you make a comic. They'll probably like your comic also. There you go. So followers on social media translate to potential comic readers. You just got to get your comic in front of their little eyeballs. Uh, not everyone who follows you will become a fan of your comic, but it is still a good investment of your time. For example, I follow a lot of artists who have webcomics, and I, I don't read it for one reason or another. But I know that it exists, and it comforts me, and I think that maybe someday I will read their comic. But for now, I shan't. <laughs> so, how the heck do I get followers, and how do I get them to read my comic? It's a very good question. You want to know how to get followers on social media? You engage with them. <laughs> Pardon the memes. So what the heck is engagement? Uh, engagement is a fancy social media marketing term for interaction. So this is liking, commenting, retweeting, reblogging, etc. Uh, um, I'm seeing some star why in the chat. Uh, why not is what I have to say to that. Uh, memes. Don't let your memes be dreams. Um, if you want people to engage with what you're making, uh, then you have to engage with them first. Uh, so my tip for social media, uh, this applies more for things like Twitter and Instagram, where you're more encouraged to be social. Uh, talk to people. Be friendly without the expectation of getting something in return. Because every single time you like someone's photo or like you like their Twitter post, their name is going to come up and they will see you. And it's just like gradually working your way into the consciousness of the world. This sounds so dark, but like legit, I recognize people's usernames who like stuff on on Twitter. Like if you're liking like every Twitter post I make, I'm probably going to start recognizing your username. Um, and if you make a web comic and you like take the effort to be chill and be cool and be nice to me, I might want to read your comic. It's not a guarantee. But you should do it without the expected expectation of getting anything in return. More social media tips. It is okay to share the same art multiple times. I feel like people get caught up because they want to make something new every single day. Um, but the truth is that the internet has an extremely short attention span, and only a fraction of the people who follow you are gonna see you are gonna see a thing the first time that you post it. So you can post it multiple times and people probably won't be mad. And if they are mad, they could just scroll past it. Um, so you, can, you should retweet and reblog yourself. You can post older pieces if you have nothing new to post. You can post work in progresses, etc. There is like so many things you can do to like make sure that you have something to post every day. You don't have to post something new every day. Just keep, keep reminding people that you exist is my, my pro tip because otherwise they will forget about you, because the internet has a short attention span. Um, follow trends. Be a freaking sellout. <laughs> uh, the, the, this is mostly a joke, but like, for real though. Uh, trending hashtags on Twitter, or using popular sounds on TikTok, stuff like that. Uh, it's a great way to reach new audiences you wouldn't have otherwise. So you guys know how like on Twitter, um, they'll do like hashtag portfolio day, or hashtag small artist or hashtag whatever, um, and then like a lot of people will post stuff under that hashtag. People like to go through those hashtags and look for new artists to follow. And if you have a post there, you might get some new followers from that. So highly recommend if there's like a trend going around on Twitter or whatever, jump in on it. There is no shame in being a trend follower if it's going to help new people get eyes on your work. All right. Cool. Um, also, just talk about your comic. Um, but in a casual, not self promote way. Um, it reminds people that you have a comic and it can give them insight into you as a creator and then reminds people that you exist. I ramble about dumb cast off things on my Twitter all the gosh dang time. And it just, it, it's like, it's just me being me and talking, but also it's 
it reminds people that, hey, I have a webcomic, just like real subtly. Don't talk about your comic as an excuse to like remind people you have a webcomic. Just talk about it because it's worth talking about, you know? And it has this, the pleasant side effect of reminding people that you have a webcomic. Moving on. Uh, or not. Moving on. Okay, so social media for the busy webcomicer. Uh, this is what I was talking about earlier. So ideally, you should post to social media at least once per day. But that's a lot of brain bandwidth. So if you can't post finished pieces, post cropped po comic panels, repost finished works, um, work in progresses, all kinds of things can help pad out your feed. Uh, social media can be really time consuming, though. Uh, so apps that help you schedule posts ahead of time are incredible, valuable resources. Um, my personal favorite is Later. Um, they are not paying me. I have just used their service for like four years and I swear by it. Um, it has a drag and drop calendar. You can schedule posts for multiple websites at the same time. It will automatically post when it's scheduled to, so you don't have to think about it. And it can save captions and hashtags so you don't have to copy paste stuff all the time. Um, I recommend like spend a half hour scheduling your entire social media presence for an entire week and then just let it run itself. Just let it run itself. And I will go ahead and say later has a free plan. Um, it's pretty bare bones, but it's still useful. Um, you get like 30 posts a month and you can only post single images, but it's still very handy. And I used it like for our podcast and stuff. Um, I use a free account for like stuff that I don't post on too terribly often. My main account, I do have a paid account. Um, it's a little bit expensive, so I wouldn't recommend it to folks unless you're really serious about it. I pay about a hundred bucks a year for later, and that means I get like a hundred posts per month. I can schedule a whole bunch of different types of stuff, including video. Uh, it's awesome, but I acknowledge that like if you have to stick to a free plan, the free plan is still good. Um, so this is what just 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 for the sake of talking points, this is what my later dashboard looks like. Um, so over on the left, you can like up upload pictures. Um, and then you can just drag and drop those pictures. You can select which social media you want to press, you want to uh, schedule it to. And so this is what my calendar of the past week looks like. So you can see like I've got comic updates in there. I've got just like random uh, posting about my store uh, stuff. I've got like some self promo stuff. And I also like had some just random older pieces that I just posted because I haven't like, th they haven't seen the light of day in like six months to a year. Um, so yeah, one more time, this is called Later. Uh, it's my favorite. And also once you upload something over on the side, you can upload it, you can like schedule it as many times as you want and it just keeps a library so you don't have to constantly go back and uh, schedule stuff um, or like dig through your computer for your files over and over and over again. I'm gonna take a quick sip. <laughs> okay, I'm wearing out my voice. We're almost talking. Okay. Um, so promotion basic guidelines. Uh, don't annoy people constantly to read your work. Uh, you will reek of desperation. Let them come to you. Just sprinkle stuff out onto social media. Let them come to you. Like feeding baby birds. Just let them come to you. Don't be up in people's faces like, oh my God, please read my webcomic. Don't guilt people into reading your webcomic. Just be pleasant, post stuff, remind people that you exist, show off your work, be happy with the work that you create, and just let them come to you. Be chill. Uh, don't become friend, don't try to be friends with someone just so that they'll check out the comic you draw or want to draw you fan art, because that is shitty and people can see right through it. Trust me, it sucks. It's happened to me before, where people are nice to me on social media just because they see me as a quote unquote large creator and they want my attention. They want Senpai to notice them. It sucks, don't do it. You can interact with larger creators on like social media, but just do it because you like them and you want to talk to them. Don't do it with the ulterior motive of, uh, I get Senpai to notice me and then Senpai will read my webcomic. It sucks. Don't do it. Don't be that guy. Also, yeah, 
don't be a jerk. The comics community is extremely small, depending on how it looks, and word gets around fast. Like, every webcomic artist knows each other in one way, shape, or form. And, um, if you are a butt in my comment section, everybody else is gonna know about it. I'm gonna tell all my webcomic friends that you are a butt in my comment section, and they will all know. <laughs> they will know. We're a bunch of gossipers. <laughs> okay, so do try to post once per day. Um, also, post when people are awake. Don't post at midnight and expect to get, like, a whole lot of attention. There's, like, websites that will break down, like, the quote-unquote best time to post things. Um, so I would recommend researching into that. Um, do try to promote others. Um, help spread the word about other people's comics. Be polite. Be genuine. If you like a webcomic, tell your audience about it. Be cool. Be chill. And then maybe Senpai will notice you and return the favor. Yay. <laughs> uh, and then, yeah, do be sincere and enthusiastic. Just don't just be on social media. Be enthusiastic about you, what you make. Be a positive person and people will be drawn to your energy. Be somebody <laughs> that is a joy to be around. And that's that's I know that that's like a tall task because social media is just kind of like a big beast. These are all very vague. And the advice I'm giving here is not going to apply to everyone, but just just try to be cool. Just be chill. Just be yourself and just let your audience find you like just I don't know. Social media is one of those things that's hard to talk about, but it, it's really just like kind of trial and error. Just just be chill. Be chill. Post your art. Be happy with the art that you post. Help give other people work um, or like spread the love around, talk about your favorite comics, talk to your favorite comic creators without the expectation of getting anything back. Just because you like their work and you like your own work. And gradually people will be drawn to that energy. Good. We good? We good. Moving on. This is the value of self-promotion. So if you guys saw that I posted like a survey in a couple different places that had like one question, um... This is the results from that. Uh, this is probably not too terribly accurate because of the short notice. I only had this poll up for like three days, um, but it got about 100 responses. And so this is what we've learned. So that big, um, for the record, this starts at the 7.4 on the right. Uh, that's Twitter and it goes around counterclockwise. So like going around counterclockwise, starting from about the three o'clock position, that's Twitter. Instagram, Tumblr, I only have one TikTok because I didn't advertise this poll on TikTok, but if I did, there would be more people there. Um, a large portion are from the Spider Forest website and top banner. Spider Forest, um, the collective that I am in, we help advertise each other and it can help find new readers by like getting other stuff. Um, link pages on other web comics is like the next big one. Um, just because people like a webcomic and they want to see what you read and what you recommend and they'll find you there. Um, top webcomics or other webcomics listing sites? Uh, not as many, but this this pie slice used to be a lot bigger. Um, and then the green is, tapat is Tapas, the red is Webtoon. Which surprised me, honestly. Um, because I didn't think that people from Webtoon followed me in other places. But... That was a surprise for me. And also all those itty bitty little slices, those are like, uh, those are other, like the other category. Um, so that's like, I have an online store uh, where I like sell stickers and stuff. I'm gonna casually post a link in the chat. And um, I put little flyers for cast off and a free cast off sticker in every single purchase that I ship out. And some folks uh, see that and they're like, oh, hey, this looks like a cool comic. And they read it. I've gotten some readers that way. Uh, one of those was, I saw your art at a convention and I started reading it from there. Um, a few people came from places like Twitter where like somebody, Clip Studio Senpai, um, like reblogged something of mine. Just people can come from everywhere. Um, so there's all there's value in like, I would not take these as proportionate. Because I ran a similar poll a few years ago and the results were, were very different. Um, so just, there is value 
in self-promotion, this is what I am intending to show. You have to promote yourself. You have to put yourself out there online, and people will find you. My voice is dying. <laughs> I'm going to take a hot second and take a drink. Everybody look at my beautiful pie chart. Mm -hmm. The pie chart's a little bit crunchy because it's a low-res image, but it's fine. Okay, so this is what everybody wants to know about. Making it rain. Earning money with your webcomic. This is the hard part that everybody wants to know about. And I will go ahead and say this up front. The tips here are not recommended, are, are not recommended, are not guaranteed to get you anything. Because making money in webcomics is a very difficult, tricky, and honestly, like, not, the tips I give here are not going to be applicable to everybody. They're not going to work for everybody. What works for me isn't going to work for everybody else. It's not a universal thing. That's the word I was looking for. But I'm still going to talk about it. Because it's worth talking about it. All right, let's get into it. If we're going to talk about money in comics, we need to talk about Patreon. We all knew this was coming. Don't even pretend like you didn't. In case you don't know, the heck is Patreon? Patreon is a monthly subscri subscription service. It is like Netflix for internet creators. So basically, I run my own Netflix. Um, for a certain amount of money each month, donors, also called patrons, can access exclusive content from creators that is hidden behind a paywall. Um, how much patrons pay is up to them, and the rewards they get are decided by creators. Um, so, me. If you have an audience, Patreon is a good way for your audience to help support your project. Notice that the beginning of that last sentence. If you have an audience, Patreon, like I'm getting, I'm getting real here and I need you guys to stick with me. Patreon is most effective for creators with an already established fan base because realistically, less than 1% of your fans and readers will be willing and able to financially support you. So if you only have 10 people that read your webcomic, you might not make anything on Patreon because like 1%, I think is a good ratio of how many people read your comic versus how many people are actually able to pay you to support you for that comic. But this is why self-promotion is so important because the more you build your audience and the more you build that rapport with your readers, the more likely they are to be able to want to support you financially. Like a lot of people are like teens. I know a large portion of my audience is teens who don't necessarily have the disposable income or any income at all to support the comic. And that's okay. I still want you guys to be here. I want you guys to like be able to exist and support my work. But the 1% of folks who read my comic like it enough to support it and have the means to support it, I want the more people who read your comic, the more likely you are that you're going to find those people who are both willing and able to support you. Okay? So, how do you build a rapport with your audience? You have to be consistent. Prove that you can update your comic regularly and not miss too many updates. So here's the thing, you guys. Here's the thing. I have an opinion Incoming opinion. Whenever I go to a comic, like a new comic that's only been around for like a month or less, or even like a year or less, if I go to your comic and you haven't been running it that long, if you are a brand new web comics artist with no portfolio backing you, you have no re repertoire basically, you have no, I have no reason that I could trust you. Basically, that sounds so harsh. I don't mean it to come off like that. But like, I'm just discovering you. You are just getting your feet wet in the world of webcomics. You have just started your webcomic, maybe like six months ago or less. You already have a Patreon link. That says a lot. That says, I am doing this for the, comp for the money. Even if it's not true, that's how it looks. You know? I didn't start my comp my Patreon until after I had started. I had been doing cast off for like a year before I started my Patreon. And even then, I only started my Patreon 
because I had an unemployment scare where I thought I was going to lose my dang job. And that's what panic kicked my butt into making a Patreon finally. Like, I had been sitting there making this comic for over a year. And I, like, with no financial compensation, nothing, just because I like to make the comic. What kicked my butt into making a Patreon was the fact that I might be losing my job. I didn't at the time. That's a whole other story. Um, but yeah, so, so basically, like, if you're going to have a Patreon, you want to make sure that you are providing people the fact that you are worth supporting. You know? Yeah, so, so someone just said something in the chat. You should start a Patreon when people in your audience are asking you to start a Patreon. When people are asking for it, that's the right time for it. If you only have one page of your webcomic out, I'm not going to support you on Patreon. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to because I don't know who you are or what you're going to do. You could never update again, and then it would just be a waste of my money. You know, build yourself up first. Make me understand that you are worth supporting. And then I will support you. You know? I'm not going to throw $5 at a webcomic artist who's never actually made a webcomic. I have to, like, see the effort that you're putting into this. You know? And I'm sorry if this is coming out really harsh. This is going to be the harshest I am for this presentation. Just because I have feelings. I have opinions. And honestly, it's harsh, but it's true. You know? But, again, going back to the PowerPoint. How do you build a rapport with your audience? How do you make yourself worth supporting? How do you make people trust you and want to support you? You have to be consistent. You have to prove that you can update your comic regularly and not miss too many updates. You have to communicate. You have to communicate with your audience. You're with your readers. If you do have to miss an update, you need to let them know so that they feel like they're on the same level as you. You should be reliable. If you promise something, be it just comic pages every week or even Patreon rewards, especially Patreon rewards, though, because at that point people are paying you, you have to deliver on that promise. Because if you don't, people won't trust you and they won't throw you money. <laughs> Basically, you want to have good customer service. Because if you're going to treat making webcomics like a job, you have to treat it like a job. Okay? Part-time job or otherwise, you have to treat it like the work that it is. So, going into rewards. What should your rewards be? The best Patreon rewards are things that you are already doing. Byproducts of the comic creation process. Ideally, the best rewards are the type of rewards that are not extra work. The most comic stuff for web comics is things like seeing pages early, work in progress images, or behind the scenes little extra stuff. Um, I do all three of those things. My Patreons, my Patreon supporters, they get comics like a month early, and I post work in progress pictures. I have like a weekly progress blog that's now like semi weekly because I'm kind of just going through a thing. Um, and I try to post like behind the scenes stuff as much as I can, that kind of thing. And all of that. It's just byproducts of making the comic. I know that some people in my chat are going to give me crap because I have a monthly mail club, but I didn't start that for years, okay? And I do that because I have time for it. It's good if you can do it, but don't. The best rewards are the stuff that you don't have to spend extra time on. So think about how much should I charge? Uh, think about how much you would be willing to pay for certain rewards. If you wouldn't pay $10 a month for something, your audience probably won't either. So here is, oh, nope. Okay, um, I thought the next slide was something different. Uh, but I'll go ahead and go into this. So these are common webcomic Patreon rewards. So you can use these as ideas or a baseline. Um, One to $2 a month. Um, is, I like your stuff, but I'm not made out of money. Uh, so this is like your tip jar. It's very basic, very easy rewards. Um, just simple stuff that doesn't take you a whole lot of time. Uh, three to five dollars is kind of like your standard medium tier. Um, where it's like, I really like your stuff, but I'm also not made of money. 
So this is where you start to break into like early access to comic pages, more in depth behind the scenes stuff, that kind of thing. Um, and then $10 and higher is where you get the hashtag good stuff. Uh, this is like, I know some people who do sketch requests. I personally do physical rewards every month because I have time and energy to make like stickers and postcards and stuff. I have a print club, mail club. Um, I also, some people, I used to do this, I don't anymore, but some people do like inked and colored monthly requests for higher tiers, that kind of thing. Uh, so just to give you an idea, uh, this is what my Patreon tiers look like. I have four. Uh, the $10 tier I just added last month, actually. It's brand new. Uh, but for $2 a month is just the baseline. It's the tip jar. It's like, thanks for supporting me. I'm going to give you just like a little bit of extra stuff. Uh, and then you get like a special Discord role in the chat room. Uh, you get a discount on everything in my merch store. And also I love and appreciate you. Um, $5 a month is you get to see comic pages a month early. You get access to a special Discord channel that's only for early access patrons, so you guys can scream and post beams in there like you were doing yesterday. Um, $10 a month is um, the Mail Club Lite, which is just stickers from my monthly Mail Club. It's like two to three stickers per month. Uh, and then the Mail Club tier, which is $15, that is two to three stickers and the postcard for every month. So that's what I do. I do physical tiers because I have the time and energy to. I cast off as part of art, which I consider my full-time job, so I have time to dedicate to it. I would recommend, starting on the left, working your way towards the right as a creator. Start with the easy stuff first, and if you figure out that you have time, you can dedicate to making more stuff, then make more stuff. Okay, so moving along. I'm going to take a sip real quick. We're almost to the end. We're almost to the end. <laughs> okay mm. so when you are first starting set some small easy to reach goals so patreon lets you do goals uh that you can aspire towards um set some small ones and slowly work your way up for example my first goal on patreon was ten dollars a month and that's just to cover my web hosting um the best goal rewards are things that you only have to make once, i.e. a new bonus comic or a process video. Um, if you make rewards that you have to commit to doing monthly, it's very tempting, but it's very easy to overdo. Um, so you want it, the My advice is to make goals something you only need to make once, and then you're done, and you don't have to think about it anymore. Um, don't promise something that you can't reliably do. If you make promises you can't keep, you will disappoint your fans and or end up with a bad reputation. So like I said, start simple and gradually work your way up. Don't start with, I'm going to do a, a, a whole new bonus comic every single month. It's a bad idea. Do some, start simple. Start with byproducts of pr comic creation. Work your way up to the hard stuff. So, general tips for Patreon. Do talk about and promote your Patreon. Same social media roles like rules apply. The kind of stuff you would do to promote your webcomic, you can also use to promote your Patreon. Don't shove it down people's throats, but just remind people that it exists fairly regularly. Just be like, hey, just so you know, if you want to support the comic, there's ways you can do that. Here you go. Um... Do look at successful campaigns for inspiration. Um, you can definitely like go onto other comic artists Patreon and see what kind of rewards they offer. Um, you might even like throw them a couple bucks and just get an idea of what their rewards look like. I've done that before. I've like pledged to people just so I can see what they're doing and copy it. <laughs> um, but they're they're getting paid for it, so I don't think they'd complain if they knew. <laughs> and then uh do have a link to your Patreon on your comics website. Make it really, really easy to find so that people who want to support you don't have, don't have to look very hard. Make it easy to find. Also, don't promise more than you can reliably do. We've already talked about this at length. Um, don't set your expectations too high, because when you don't meet them, you'll just get upset. Set reasonable goals for yourself. Okay. 
And also, don't constantly spam people. There's a very fine line that you kind of have to walk when you're doing self-promotions. Um, if you post too much, you will drive people away, which is the opposite of what you want. Um, also, I'm going to go ahead and apologize because I've seen a few people mention it in chat. I'm sorry if I sound like very serious business right now. I'm getting a little bit worn out from all the talking and my voice is hurting just a little bit. So if I sound like super serious business, it's just because my like I'm reaching the end of my my bandwidth as far as doing panels goes. I knew I should have broken this up and done it in more in multiple sessions, but my hubris will be my downfall. Anyway, moving right along. Oh, come on. Scroll down. Thank you. Okay, so some other methods for making money on your comic. Coffee is kind of like the internet's tip jar. Um, it is a single-time alternative to Patreon. You can do small donations of $3, which is like you buy them a coffee, quote-unquote. Um, and so your donors can buy multiple at once. Uh, the nice thing about coffee is that coffee itself has no fees. Um, but it does work through PayPal, and PayPal does have transaction fees, so it's going to take like 3% of whatever you're making. But it's like a drop in the bucket, personally. Um, also, Coffee Gold has a premium model. Um, it does cost money, but it allows for like recur recurring monthly payment similar to Patreon, and you get a whole lot of other features and that kind of thing. So I I've been on Gold for a couple months. I want to do more with it, but for now, I'm just kind of vibing with it. Yeah, if you um if you uh if you have a coffee and you on gold, you can like change coffee to whatever you want. And so I have mine that's like buy me a snack instead of uh instead of coffee because I don't drink coffee. Coffee I'm 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 not good with caffeine. It makes me shaky. Um but yeah, so alternative money making methods for comics. Uh some comic creators have like an actual tip jar that links to their PayPal. Um, which allows for donations in a way that's more flexible than coffee. So people can set like the exact amount that they want to donate to you. Uh, selling merchandise like shirts, stickers, tote bags, etc. on print on demand sites like Redbubble uh, can help earn passive income. Um, all you have to do for sites like that is you post your designs and the site will do whatever somebody buys it. So let's say if I make a cast off shirt and I stick it on Redbubble, um, they're not going to make it until someone buys it. So if someone goes on onto Redbubble and buys my cast off shirt, Redbubble will print it, ship it to the customer, and they will give me the money that I make from that. Now, the, the margins on this are usually pretty small. You sell a sticker for $2 and you get about 20 cents from it. But it's nice because it's literally free money. You don't have to touch it at all. Redbubble will handle literally everything for you, and occasionally you'll get, like, some money from it. I call my Redbubble my burrito fund. I get, like, ten bucks a month from it, and that's about as much as I need to purchase a burrito for myself to eat. <laughs> um, PDF and ebook versions of your comic can be a good form of passive income, same as above. Um, you can sell high-res versions of your comic in, like, an e-reader form, and then your readers can buy them and take them on the go. I've got a lot of people who buy the um, cast off ebooks that I have on uh, my store. I will post another link in the chat. Um, and then you can just like take the comic with you. You don't have to rely on a stable internet connection. If you're bored on a train or whatever, you can just like sit there and read the comic. And then lastly, you can also sell physical books, which leads into making it real, self publishing and printing your comic. So I'll be honest, I'm going to go through this bit real fast because I think this, this panel was I, designed to be like for very beginners and a lot of the stuff I'm about to talk about, um, I have other resources that will give you this exact same information and it will save my voice. I'm going to go through this real fast. So more and more webcomic creators are self-publishing their comics with resources like Kickstarter and hundreds of printers for small and large runs of books, it is easier than ever to get your comic in print. So let's talk about how. Again, I could do a whole panel on Kickstarter, but I'm just sticking to the bare bones basics. Um, so there's two different types of printing when you're going to make physical books. Digital printing is good for small runs of books, 
offset printing is more expensive overall because it kind of requires a larger run of books, but the books by themselves are cheaper. Um, because printing comics is relatively expensive, most creators turn to crowdfunding like Kickstarter to fund their books. So, crowdfunding basics. A good starting point is to look at other comic Kickstarters and learn from them. If they succeeded, if they met their goal, what did they do well? If it failed, what went wrong? Try to find comics with a similar size fan base to yours to analyze. This can give you an idea of what to expect when you run your own campaign. And also, the most important thing I want you guys to take out of this Kickstarter segment, don't run a Kickstarter to fund the creation of a webcomic. Make a comic first and then use Kickstarter to print it or fund it, like merchandise or whatever. Because I, like you guys said, you appreciated my honesty earlier. Here's some blunt honesty. If you are a new creator and you make a Kickstarter to fund the creation of a new webcomic, you will fail. It will not succeed. I am being brutally honest with you, but it is a fool's errand. You should make your comic first and use Kickstarter to print it or fund merchandise for it. Don't go on to Kickstarter with a concept for a comic and expect people to fund it, especially if you have never made webcomics before. People don't have a reason to put their faith in you with their wallets. Make your comic first and then crowdfund it. Chat's real quiet right now. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm just going to breeze through this part real fast, because if you're just now starting a webcomic, I don't think you have to worry about Kickstarter very soon. But just general tips. Keep it basic. Don't go overboard with extras and stuff. Uh, figure out your budget ahead of time. Calculate your budget and remember to plan for emergencies. Make sure that you're raising more money than you actually need because something is going to happen. There's some going to be some skerfuffle and bad stuff will happen. So just be prepared for money. Uh, timing is everything. Don't run a Kickstarter right before Christmas because no one has money. Um, also, don't do it around tax season um, because no one has money. That's what I'm suffering through right now. My sales have been very weak this month because it's tax season and no one has money. Don't plan a Kickstarter when you're trying to raise funds when, during the times of year when people don't have money. Um, Kickstarter promotion is the one time where you have to go balls out and just promote yourself all over the place. Because otherwise people won't know that you're doing it. And because it's a limited time, you really have to push it. So hype yourself the heck up. Um, have a variety of price points. This is also a point for uh, Patreon. Um, have a lot of different price points so that people with different budgets can, also, can all get something. Don't ship anything smaller than your book. Learn from my mistakes. Don't ship small stuff because if you have a, sh a Patreon tier, or not a Patreon tier, if you have a Kickstarter tier that's $5 and somebody buys it in Australia and shipping to Australia is $15, you will lose $10 on their pledge. That is a mistake that I made with my first cons with my first and only Kickstarter so far. Yeah. Learn from my mistakes. Also, yeah, just in general, be a co good communicator. Don't leave people hanging. Um, okay, so these are the resources. If you guys want to learn more about crowdfunding stuff, look at these people. Iron Circus Comics, Let's Print a Comic, and Let's Kickstart a Comment PDFs. You can buy these on their store. They are not free, but they are not that expensive. They're like, I think, $5 and $8, uh, respectively. But they are well worth the investment. I have both of them for when the time comes. Very, very useful. Highly recommend it. Webcomic Alliance. I mentioned them once before, but they have a lot of articles about crowdfunding. Um, Print Ninja Publishing Tip. Print, Print Ninja is a comics printing service, and uh, they have like some tips on how to set up stuff for printing. It's very good. Also, just Google. Google's your best friend. Use Google. Research. Okay, it is time to wrap up. You are now armed with knowledge to promote and sell your comic. Go forth, friends, and make comics. Can I get a yeehaw in the chat? <laughs> All right, so that is all from me. Um, 
I technically stream from five to eight. Um, so I've got a few more minutes. My voice is dying. I'm going to run to the bathroom for like two minutes, go drink some water, and then I will come back and we will resume the question part. So I will be right back. Y'all arm yourself with your questions. Um, if anybody sees any questions in chat that you know the answer to that I've already said, feel free to answer for me. Um, that will make my job a little bit easier. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go take a quick bathroom break, and then we will get into the question portion. Yeehaw! Okay, I'm back. What's up, y'all? Okay. So, question time. Let's get into it. The rest of this stream is going to be very, relatively chill. Um, because I'm gonna, I, I don't have to worry about like fitting this all into my three hour time slot. So, mm hmm. How many social medias could you should you keep up with regularly is too enough. It really depends on what you enjoy and what you have found successful. Um, I maintain a lot of social media because I get a lot of like my freelance uh, stuff comes from social media. Like my business relies on me being on social media. Um, so I would recommend like testing the waters in different social media. Um, and seeing which ones apply. It's not a matter of quantity, it's a matter of quality. You know? Like, if you hate being on Instagram, then don't, you don't have to bother with Instagram if you hate it. You know? I would just, like, pick a social media you like, you like to use, you like to work on, um, and, uh, just make it work for you. Like, we went, we went on a whole thing about social media. It's all a little bit different. Um, here, you know what? Actually, while I'm doing this, um, I'm going to bring over my chat window. I actually have a just chatting screen that I've literally never used. Hang on, just while we're doing this, I'm going to run and grab my um, chat box. Where is my chat box? chat box copy oops, comic stream paste where is it where is my chat box oh i don't think that worked uh oh oh well i tried <laughs> um um
When you post art on Webtoon and Tapas, do you retain the intellectual properties? Yes. Uh, theoretically, you should. But before you post your comic anywhere, you should definitely check their uh, terms of service to make sure. Like, you should. Um, definitely. Um, how do you choose or make a title? Um, I try to, so the rules for titles are it should be simple, should be easy to remember, should be easy to spell. I am not going to remember a webcomic called The Trials and Tribulations of Yenathor B. Hunchback. I will never remember that. But Hunchback is an easy title to remember. <laughs> Follow the Disney rules. <laughs> Take your story and just, just, just boil it down to one word. <laughs> <laughs> and uh just make it simple D just keep it easy um you can also like a sentence is usually good provided that it's something that's easy to spell um <laughs> okay here's a big one i've been developing my three season fantasy comic for two years with my co-creator after doing nothing but planning and pre-production for so long we finally cracked and just decided to try and post we don't have a buffer or a set upload schedule. Are we screwing ourselves or are we okay with launching just what we have and using the motivation to continue? Um, so you've already posted. So a lot of my advice will not apply. I would say as soon as you can, start uploading on a regular schedule. Because my very, but the first web comic that I did consistently didn't have a regular schedule. I just posted pages when I had them done. And my 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 peanut gallery was literal peanuts. Like nobody read my comic. If people people value consistency, I would recommend starting on a regular update schedule as soon as possible. Because that way people will know when you update, you will they will see you as a consistent comic source, and then they will know when to expect updates, and it will be an overall more pleasing experience for them. Um, I would recommend working on a buffer as much as you can. Um, if you have to take, I would almost say, like, take a few days off or, like, take a few weeks off and just, like, work on your comic really, really hard for a while and build up a buffer and then come back with a regular schedule and a buffer. That will help you immensely, trust me. Um. What else? Advice for file saving. Sizes for upload versus what you save or backup. Um, so you should definitely be drawing pretty big. Um, I always draw in print resolution because I do plan on printing cast off someday. Um, but when you're uploading pages, I would recommend not making them be wider than 900 pixels. Because that's just kind of like a good size where it's big, but... It's big enough for people to see and read, um, but not so big that it's going to slow down your computer upload, like, uh, loading your website. Um, hmm. What Canva size do you recommend for webcomic pages? It honestly depends on if you have any goals for printing or not. Um, I do, and so I make all my pages in a standard comic book format that's easy to print. If you have no goals for printing, you don't have to stick to that. Um, but if printing is something you think you may even hypothetically want to do, I would stick to an aspect ratio that's like the length versus the width. Um, pick an aspect ratio that is easy to print. That would be my one advice. Can you show an example of a good character reference sheet? No, because I don't use... <laughs> This this is my one thing is like I've just drawn my characters so much that I know what they look like and I actually don't keep character reference sheets around. Um do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> um make yourself a character reference sheet. <laughs> don't be like me. Whew. Um is AdSense worth it when many people use AdBlock? Um Depends. I Like I said, I've personally never used AdSense. Um, but I what I would do, if what I would recommend is test the waters first. Put like five bucks into it or ten bucks. And just like set it up and see what you get back. 
and then maybe do a couple of different tests with like different parameters and see what you find. See what the results are. Just fiddle around, experiment with it, uh, work on um, like there's a lot of resources on YouTube for that sort of thing. Um, I would definitely recommend like doing your research, doing some experiments and then deciding for yourself if it's worth it. Um, how do you have balance? How do you balance a full time job and writing a web comic uh, with great difficulty? Frankly, um, what will make your life easier is if your web comic cannot be your main thing, which for most people it's not going to be. Um, I would recommend keeping your comic extremely simple. Like, if, if you only have an hour a day or less to draw and work on your web comic, um, don't do something that's going to take you 20 hours to finish one page. Like, do it in black and white. Do it with just spot colors. Um, just do, like, make your comic as simple as possible. You don't have to make a Renaissance painting for every panel. Just do enough to get your story across, you know? Um, how do you choose which story idea is the best to create as your first comic? For your first comic, I would say pick something that you can finish quickly. Um, pick something simple. If, um, but also pick what you're passionate about. If you have an idea for like a super, do, like you love this epic fantasy quest and you super want to do it and it's the only thing you're passionate about, but you've never made comics before, I would recommend like picking a character and just like drawing a short comic about their backstory or whatever. Um, you know, just like illustrate a short story in the world that you're passionate about. Um, but yeah, just like, just, I would recommend following your passions. Um, do what interests you and what excites you the most. And here we have Star making these beautiful full color pages even back when she taught in Japan. Listen, I didn't do much else, is the thing. I, I'm a very boring person who's not terribly social. <laughs> My comic was like the only thing I did outside of work. Um, hmm. So for the record, I, I, I only have a limited amount of time to answer questions. I'm going to target questions in my chat that cannot be specifically Googled. Like, if it's, a, if it's a question that you could answer with a Google search, I'm probably just going to skip it. And I don't mean to be snobby, but I want to get to stuff that's like more specific, you know? Because um, I have a limited amount of time uh, for this. Um... How do you get your characters to look uniform? Uh, practice, reference sheets, draw them multiple times before they ever appear in the comic so that you can get a handle on drawing them. I actually have a very good example. Um, I, I, I came up with like the finalized design for my character Marina like a week before she showed up in the comic. And you can like look at the art for like the entire chapter eight of Cast Off and watch me settle into how to draw her hair well. Because she was my first character with curly hair and I had no idea how I wanted to draw it. And it starts out more complicated and you can gradually see me like streamlining how to draw this character's hair over the entire course of chapter eight. So I'd recommend just like drawing them a lot. And uh, it's good to work with, uh, I would draw them a lot, get used to drawing them and then make a character sheet. Make a character sheet after you have settled on a good and easy way to draw them. Okay. Um... How much planning is too much planning? Honestly, it depends on you. Um, that is going to be something that is individual to each person. Um, I would say no matter how much you plan, don't be afraid to change things if you're unsatisfied with it. Um, I actually changed how Cast Off ends a few months into production because I decided I didn't like it anymore. And I came up with a cooler idea. <laughs> Um, so just like, just plan ahead. I would recommend like outlining your entire story. And then if you feel the need to change it, then you can just be flexible with yourself. Try not to box yourself in. And if your passions change along the way or your tastes and stories change along the way and you want that to affect your webcomic, you can do that. Useful. Um, I don't have any money, so I can't hire another person to do the art or help me with my comic idea. Are there other ways to establish a good trade for their skills? Um, that one's tricky. 
So unfortunately, if you're going to hire an artist, I would I would recommend paying them like with money, because here's the thing. No matter what you trade them, I can't I can't pay my rent or feed my dogs with like exposure or whatever. I'm not saying that's what you would offer. I'm just saying that the value of anything you have to offer is going to pale in comparison to like actual money. And that's capitalism, baby. But unfortunately, it's it's the hard, fast reality. If you can't afford to pay another person to work on your webcomic, um, you can try and get better drawing yourself, which leads back into just practice. Just make comics. Just make a lot of comics. Draw a lot. Teach yourself. Use resources online. Look at tutorials. Take classes. Like, there's so many resources out there on how to be an artist. Um, if you super duper cannot afford it, consider that webcomics might not be the medium for you. Um, would your story work as a visual novel where all you have to do is have a handful of sprites and would be significantly cheaper um, to significantly cheaper to uh, produce or commission art from people? Um, if if. If that's something you struggle with, comics might not be the medium for you. And I don't mean to be a downer because I know like people like comics and people want to make comics. But unfortunately, the reality is like comics involve art. However, you could also you can make a 3D comic. You commission someone to like make the models for you and then you just like pose them and light them. Learn how to use 3D software. Blender is free um, and you can make your comic that way. There's a lot of different ways and loopholes around having to draw a comic if you can't. Um, or aren't interested in teaching yourself how to draw, or you can't afford to hire an artist. You just got to figure it out. Um, do you have trouble thinking about how you format your comic when you first start writing? Um, for me personally, um, I suck at writing prose, and so I naturally gravitate towards scripts where I can focus just on the dialogue. And so comics kind of came naturally to me because that was a format that I was more comfortable writing in. Okay, yeah, so a good point. Um, on the topic of making comics, um, I personally prefer bad art with good writing versus gorgeous art with bad pacing. So yeah, just just do just do what you're comfortable with. Like get your city your shitty bicycles out of your system. Um, it's once again, it's the two cakes argument. Even if your comic isn't the prettiest thing in the world, if it's well written people will still like it. And it might be a little bit harder to get people to read it, but as you progress, your art will get better and better just because you're practicing it, you know? How would you go about making a graphic novel and being able to sell it in stores? Uh, step one, you make a graphic novel. And honestly, that's about as far as I'm willing to like go on that because A, I have no experience with that personally. Uh, B, like... That's good for aspirations, but focus on the reachable goals first. If you want to make a webcomic and put it in stores, step one is making the webcomic, you know? Like, you can talk and talk and talk about your goals all day, but sitting down, doing the work, making the comic is the first thing you have to do, always. Looking for more questions. How do you feel about animation and webcomics? It's cool. You can do it. I personally have no experience with it, and none of the webcomics I read have it. But if that is a skill set that you want to tap into and you want to do it, then hell yeah, do it. More power to you. Just bear in mind, depending on how detailed your animations are, it's going to make it more difficult to print if you ever go on there, if you ever want to go for that. Um, ooh, here's a good one that I can talk about. Um, has Webtoon ever offered you money because of the popularity of your comic on Canvas? Yes. So I am going to talk for a little bit about, um, platform money. Because that is actually something that I should have included and I didn't because when I first made this com- this, uh, PowerPoint, um, I wasn't making any money from those platforms, but now I am. Uh, so Webtoon, I can tell you exactly how much Webtoon pays me because they make it public. So, like, if anybody wanted to go and look, they know they could know exactly how much I make on Webtoon. Uh, because of how many followers I have and because of how many page views I have, Webtoons pays me $100 a month to have my webcomic on there. Because enough people read it and enough people are coming to the site and looking 
with their cute little eyeballs that they can shove advertisements into. I am bringing my audience to them and being a resource on their website. They give me $100 a month as long as I reach a certain view threshold. Tapas has something similar, but it is currently invite only. I don't know if they have any plans to ever expand that to public, but the system is very similar. For that one, I cannot tell you how much I make or what the goals are, but I will say it is very similar to Webtoon, where I make a certain amount of money for a certain amount of page views. And like the more page views I make, the more they pay me. But usually um, I have like the tier that I sit at pretty comfortably because the next milestone is so far away. I'm not going to reach it anytime soon unless I get like a sudden dearth of followers. Um, if you want to submit a company, a comic to a company such as Hiveworks, can you give an example of a pitch uh, for Hiveworks specifically? I would recommend going on their website and they have sample pitches there. Um, so figure out what they specifically want and look at what pitches they accept. Like, that's about all I can tell you, because for webcomics, Hiveworks is pretty much it as far as, like, company-backed publisher. Um, so if you want to pitch something to them, go see what they expect out of pitches. And unfortunately, that's all I can really give you, because I'm not in Hiveworks. I have friends who are, but I am not. Um... Uh, okay, so I already kind of answered this, but I'll go ahead and touch on it again. Uh, the best way to balance your time while making webcomics is make your webcomics take as little time as possible to make. Make your art simple. It doesn't need to be fancy. Do You can color it with just grayscale. You can do flat black and white. Your art does not need to be a masterwork. If your writing is good and your art is meh, then people will still read it and love it. Like, I have plenty of comics where, like, the art isn't my favorite thing in the world, but the story is really good, and so I enjoy reading it. You don't have to make super-duper detailed pages. If I wanted to, I could make comics where I just, like, one page will take me, like, three hours or less. If I wanted to, that would be an option for me. But me personally, I'm extra as hell, and um, I want to um, do full-color comics, so I make time for it. You know, you just got to do it. Um, let's see what else. How can you grow your writing and story skills so you make your comic enjoyable? You do, you make comics and you write comics. I know it's just kind of a cycle, but honestly, God, the best way to get better and improve at writing and drawing comics is to write and draw comics. Y'all, I could show you my old web comics. They sucked, okay? But because they sucked and because I did them, I grew as an artist, as a writer. You learn what works and what doesn't. You don't learn anything by thinking about it really hard, okay? You want to get better. The best thing you can possibly do is just, just do it. And that, that's like, people will ask me this over and over and over again. And I understand where they're coming from. But the truth is, there is nothing more valuable than just sitting down and doing the work. It's one punch man rules, okay? You just gotta do it. You gotta grit your teeth and do the thing. And that is the only way you are going to improve. You draw the comics. You write the comics. You make comics. And you will get better at making comics. That is the most constant, most consistent way to get better at anything. And I'm sorry if I'm coming on really strong right now. I'm just it's it's coming from a place of passion that if you want to make comics, you have to actually make comics. And there's no easier way I can explain this. You don't get better at things by thinking about them. You have to actually sit down and do the work. OK. Looking more at chat. Um, any tutorials or resources you could recommend for learning Clip Studio? Um, honest to God, there are so many video tutorials on YouTube. Um, just look up, like, basic Clip Studio. Like, Clip Studio themselves have made video tutorials. Um, there's tons of resources out there just, like, on YouTube or on Clip Studio's website or their blog. Just just tons 
of resources. And like I myself, I, my videos that I make on TikTok, um, I'll go ahead and post my TikTok link in the chat. Um, I've made some tutorials, but my, tic my TikTok tutorials assume that you already know basics of how to use the program. If you want to learn how to do something, YouTube can teach you literally anything. It's awesome. YouTube will teach you everything. And yeah, like I said, like the company themselves, the people who make it make a lot of really good tutorials that are useful. Um, so I would recommend like hanging out and just just like pick a YouTube video and just like just go just like let YouTube autoplay take you down a rabbit hole. Uh, would you recommend using a big drawing tablet? Um, I would recommend getting one that fits on your desk. Um, honestly, my tablet is about 13 inches. It's pretty small, um, but it fits on my desk. And so I don't need anything larger. And quite frankly, I don't want anything larger. Um, the size of your screen is not relative to the size of your skills. It's just some people prefer the larger screen. I personally don't because I have to move my arm so much to like get up to the corners. Um, but with a smaller monitor, it's uh, a lot easier to like X out of a tab or whatever because I have to move my arm less. I remember um, I used like the huge Cintiqs when I was in art school and I kind of hated working on them uh, because they were too big, you know? <laughs> okay, I got about like 10 more minutes. Any more questions? And take a sip of my water. Mm -hmm. This is your last chance for question time. I can't believe that almost like 200 people came to watch me talk about comics for three hours. There's so many people. <laughs> Chat's being real quiet. Not a lot going on right now. <laughs> will you make more streams like this? If people are interested, then sure. They will probably be a little bit less formal than this. Um, but also, like, I'm all more than willing to talk shop, like, on literally any other art stream. Um, like, if you come into an art stream, I stream every Wednesday art, like, Wednesdays are my consistent art days, but my schedule kind of shifts around. I also, I stream something Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Wednesdays is always art, but I've started all, like, when, uh, Monday and Friday, it's kind of shifts back and forth depending on how I'm feeling. I'll either draw or I'll play a game. Um, I post a stream schedule at the start of every week on Twitter. Here's my Twitter in the chat. Um... But yeah, like if you have questions, anything like on webcomic stuff, like feel free to like jump into my streams and ask because it's a lot easier for me personally to talk and answer questions that way than it is to like try and fit answers to questions into like the limited space that social media gives you, you know? Also, my streams are very chaotic, so <laughs> there you go. Um, let's see. Would it, okay, I can talk about this one. Would it be good when doing ba pages in batches to dedicate one day to sketches of multiple pages, another to line art, and another to colors? That is exactly what I do. I do my comic two pages at a time. So I, my schedule's a little bit in flux right now, but typically Mondays are my sketch days. Monday, I will sketch two pages of my comic. Tuesday, Wednesday-ish, depending on what I have going on that week, those are my inking days. Um, when I'll like ink both of those pages and then usually Thursday ends up being my coloring day and then Thursday night those pages go online or like the one does. Um, but yeah, I recommend doing things on separate days so that you kind of like take breaks between each step and you can see it makes it easier to see mistakes that you've made, you know. Uh, what is the harshest lesson you've learned making comics? Uh, that nothing is guaranteed. Success is never guaranteed to you. And also, it just kind of depends on how you define success. Um, like, there's a good chance that you will never be, like, the world's most popular webcomic creator. And you probably won't be. And so the sooner that you can accept that and just learn to be happy with what you have, but still, like, kind of striving for a bigger audience, just keep your expectations healthy. 
and you have to keep your expectations healthy or else you're going to get upset at your la at your perceived lack of success um and it's going to break you and that's the real hard truth is like comics is hard it's thankless um and so like do it because you love it don't do it for ulterior motives do it because you genuinely love the craft of making stories and making comics and drawing and writing do it because you genuinely love it and don't expect anything out of it and you will be a hundred percent happier than someone who goes into it with expectations of being payments of being famous and doesn't reach their goals Whew, i got serious for a second there huh <laughs> i i've kind of like passed the point where i'm like tired and now that like chat's cooled down and there's fewer people in here it's just like huh this is just kind of like the end of the stream. I'm relaxed. I'm like propped my chin up on my water bottle. And I'm just vibing now. Talking about comics. This is my zen place. This is my happy zone. Um, how do you make readers feel for your characters? Um, that one's a little bit nebulous. But I will do my best. Basically, what making a character likable means different things depending on what type of things you like i would say get so this kind of like blends into like my general concept of uh uh oh god the, the brain train has derailed um so it really comes down to like you have to create your characters first right if you want people to feel for your characters you have to have a character for them to feel for first People will attach themselves and relate to characters that they find relatable. And how you make a relatable character is you give them goals that other people can relate to. Um, and yeah, also like a save the cat moment. Give them a moment. Show them what your character is capable of. What is their goal? What do they want? A lot of people will attach themselves to a character just based on their goals. Um, make the character's goals clear. They don't have to shout it from the roof. Um, but just make it obvious what they want. And then if you want to make your audience cry, take it away from them. <laughs> just like dangle it out of sight. It's like playing with a dog, right? If you dangle it out of their reach for too long, then they're just going to stop playing with you. You got to give it to them and take it away. <laughs> you know, uh, it's, it's hard. It's a hard question to answer because it is so nebulous and wide of a topic. Um, but yeah, I would say a good point of research is to just like, look at media that you enjoy and ask yourself the legitimate question. Why do I care about this character and try your best to answer those questions and then apply that to the work that you make and just be like, okay, I like this character for this reason. Why do I was like, why would people care about my characters? You can also ask yourself, why do I care about this character? And then use that when you are writing to show off their best points and show off the points that will make people cry. Um, what would you recommend for trying to find someone to help, aka pay, to make a website for a comic? You know what I will do? I will drop a self-plug, well, not a self-plug, a friend plug in here. If you go on Castoff's main website, castoff-comic.com, I'll post a link in the chat, castoff-comic.com. You scroll down to the very, very bottom of the page. There's credits for the girl who made my website. Her name is Alyssa. She's a freaking genius. And she made mine for a couple hundred bucks. And <laughs> I'm sure she would appreciate the business. There you go. How should you go about making your story without seeming repetitive with other themes or other comics? Don't even worry about it. Literally, don't even worry about it. Because here's the thing. You are the only one who can tell the story that you want to make. Even if it's similar to other stuff, why does it matter? Like, do you know how many shonen anime there are? It's all the same stuff. Like, it's all the same. Like, all the popular anime all use the same tropes. And because they have different creators, they have different people at the helm, they have different ideas in the writer's room, they're all different. 
and they're all different enough to people to like them. Like, honest to God, just make a story that you would like. And other people will find you. Don't worry about being original because honest to God, truth is that nothing is original. Nothing is original anymore. Everything has been done. Like, trope-wise? Yeah, perfect example. There we go. That's what I was looking for. My Hero Academia. Arguably the most popular anime out right now. It's literally X-Men. But that doesn't make either of them different or, like, one is better than the other. It's literally like, oh, like the concept is exactly the same, but the execution is different. The execution is what's, it's what's important, and the execution is what you keep unique, and that comes from you. You know? Like, I think people can probably tell that Avatar The Last Airbender and Full Metal Alchemist were my two biggest inspirations with Cast Off. Nobody cares. It's my comic, damn it. <laughs> okay. I think I got a I got I think I got enough bandwidth for one more question. Make it a good one. Uh if I don't get to your question, um I sh feel free to like bother me during a stream. Or uh you guys can join my Discord if you're cool. I'll post a link to the Discord. The Discord is mostly for uh talking about my webcomic, talking about cast off, which you should read, wink. Um, but if you want to join the Discord, you can also talk in there, and then you'll talk with me and, like, a whole bunch of other people who are also in there doing the exact same things. Making webcomics, consuming webcomics, who can give you their feedback. You know? But yeah, I guess, I guess closing words is just make something that makes you happy. Like, seriously. Just don't focus on anything else. Don't focus on whether other people will like it or not. Don't focus on how easy it's going to be to sell it to an audience. Just make something that you would like and genuinely love to make. That's where your focus needs to be. Your focus needs to be on making something that you love so much, your passion for it is what draws other people to it. That is the best recipe for success, for success that I can give. It's to just make something that you love so passionately that it's not even work. It's still going to be work some days. But just make something that you love so much. And don't be afraid to be self-indulgent with it, you know? Just make... Just make comics. Make good comics, you know? I think that is where we will leave it. <laughs> I want... So there's still a few people hanging out here. Um... Do you guys? <laughs> so usually, usually, um, I raid people at the end of my streams. Um, usually, when I raid other pe when other streamers, there are only about like twenty people. There's almost a hundred people in chat right now. We could raid somebody. Tell you guys what. There's another artist I have raided. If you guys have been around, you guys know Bia. Bia is trying to go for partner. We're going to raid Bia and freak them out, <laughs> which is so many people. <laughs> All right. So everybody, when you go into Bia's chat, yell star raid with a whole bunch of exclamation points <laughs> and we'll freak them out. <laughs> OK, but I'll go ahead and do my closer. Uh, thanks, everybody, for coming. I hope you enjoyed this. If there's interest, I will do this again later. I will be uploading these to YouTube later um, so that you guys can watch them back. Um, if you're not already following me on Twitter, um, that is the best play to keep up with me. Um, I'll drop that link in the chat. And also, hey, read my webcomic, because comics are why you're here. <laughs> All right. Um, so I will go ahead and activate the raid. This is going to be fun. This is the biggest raid I have literally ever done. And go give Bia some love, because their art is great. And also, they're nice to me. <laughs> All right. I will see you guys later. Go scare the shit out of somebody. I will talk to you guys. I'll see you around. Thanks for hanging out. Listen to me ramble. Let's go.